Okay, today we're talking about uh, all-arounders. These are psychedelics, uh, hallucinogens. We're going to talk about marijuana today. We're going to talk about LSD, some of the others. Um, okay, some of the things we haven't dealt with yet. I'll get this thing to work. There we go. Okay. Psychedelics alter a, a user's perception whereby reason becomes unimportant and, and intensified sensations create illusions, delusions, and hallucinations. Psychedelic fungi and plants have been used by humans since Neanderthals. Uh, Amanita mushrooms have been used in India for 4,000 years. Belladonna has been used since ancient Greece. Marijuana was snorted in ancient China. LSD in form of the rye uh, fungus ergot uh, was consumed in Renaissance Europe. Psychedelics are readily used today in several forms and have waxed and waned in their popularity over the years. MDMA, 2.3% of high school seniors used it in 2000. By 2003, MDMA uh, use was down to 1.3%. LSD, 4.4% uh, of, of high school seniors used it in 1995. By 2006, only 0.6% uh, used uh, LSD. Marijuana, 37.4% of high school seniors used it in 1979. By 1992, it was down to 11.9%. By 1999, it was had risen, risen excuse me, to 23.9%. By 2006, the percentage had gone down to 18.3. So it all depends on what kids are thinking, I guess. Marijuana is used uh, the most among white people. Uh, er, uh, marijuana is used the least by African Americans. Uh, Hispanic use uh, is somewhere in between these other two groups. Psychedelics come in uh, five chemical configuration. Indols, phenol, uh, alkalamines, uh, anticholinergics, cannabinoids, and those in a class by themselves. Uh, indols include LSD and psilocybin mushrooms, uh, phenol, uh, alkalamines, uh, peyote, and MDMA, uh, and anticholinergics, uh, belladonna and datura, which aren't used in the United States very much, uh, cannabinoids, uh, marijuana. Uh, which looks like it's being uh, legalized in the United States uh, more and more readily. Uh, those in a class by themselves, ketamine, PCP, salvia divinorum, and uh, dextromethorphan. Uh, the effects of psychedelics is determined by toxicity of the substance, the amount used, the user's experience with the drugs, the emotional makeup of the user, the mood and the mental state at the time of use, uh, the pre-existing mental illnesses, uh, the surroundings in which the drug is taken. Most hallucinogens stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which results in a rise in your pulse and your blood pressure, uh, sweating, palpitations of the heart, and nausea. Psychedelics interfere with select neurotransmitters. They interfere with a lot of transmitters. Dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, anandamide, uh, glutamate, alpha psychosin, uh, but especially serotonin. And that's where you get your strange effects. Psychedelics uh, greatly affect mood because serotonin is amply represented in the limbic system. Uh, stimulation in the reticular formation in the brainstem uh, tends to overload the sensory pathways, making the user acute, acutely aware of all sensations. Overstimulation of the visual and auditory centers may cause auditory stimulation to jump to the visual pathway so that music might be seen and sights such as colors may be heard. This crossover of sensations is referred to as synesthesia. An illusion is a mistaken perception of an external stimuli. LSD and most psychedelics cause illusions. A delusion is a mistaken idea or belief that cannot be swayed by reason or other contradictory evidence. LSD and most psychedelics cause delusions. A hallucination is a sensory uh, experience that does not come from external stimuli, but is perceived as coming from an exter external stimuli. Mescaline, psilocybin, and PCP cause hallucinations. 
LSD, psilocybin mushrooms, ibocaine, uh, morning glory seeds, uh, dimethyl tryptamine, uh, foxy, AMT, and ayahuasca uh, are the uh, indole psychedelics. Uh, these substances create mental interaction by inhabiting the serotonin receptor sites, especially the 5-HT2A sites. This affects your sleep, your mood, your anxiety level, and it can form hallucinations and illusions. LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide, also known as sacrament, acid, blotter, barrels, orange sunshine, illusion, and window panes, uh, is the uh, semi-synthetic chemical compound found in the ergot uh, fungus found in some cereal grains, but especially rye. This substance was first isolated from the ergot fungus in 1938 and synthesized. Uh, LSD failed as a psychological enhancement substance uh, in psychotherapy and as a treatment for alcoholism, but it's making a comeback. Strangely enough, it's making a comeback along with magic mushrooms. Uh, people in controlled, in con controlled environments uh, it has been found to actually be a, uh, a a form of psychotherapy. They can use it with psychotherapy. Um, Cary Grant uh, suffered from uh, depression and uh, anxiety uh, almost most most of his life. Uh, he was treated with uh, LSD in 1960, and it cured all of his problems. Uh, LSD was purchased by the CIA and experimented with uh, for its use as a truth drug or a mind control drug in a program referred to as MK Ultra. It failed. They couldn't control it. Uh, one of the CIA's researchers was Harvard professor Timothy uh, Leary. Uh, Leary discovered its psychedelic properties by accident and then experimented on purpose. It was Leary who gave LSD to the rest of the rest of the world. LSD uh, was made illegal in 1966. LSD is easily manufactured, though it has mostly come from the San Francisco Bay Area of Northern California. It takes a very small amount of LSD to produce a reaction. The entire U.S. uses less than 11 pounds of LSD in any given year. The chemical is usually dissolved in alcohol and placed on blotter paper for consumption. 10 to 50 micrograms are the usual dosage on blotter paper. The popularity of LSD has waxed and waned. It was popular in the 1960s and 1970s as hippie drugs to get in touch. Uh, the drug became less popular in the 1980s, but made a comeback as a rave drug or supplement to ecstasy in the 1990s. A drug raid in Kansas virtually took the drug off the streets and made it too expensive for ravers to afford. Its popularity today is uh, with the same rave crowd for uh, people who want to experience a high. LSD is used in such small amounts that it is not normally detected by standard drug testing. And this is one of the one of the problems when somebody comes into the emergency room and you have no idea what's going on with them. Uh, you know they don't have. Uh, it's not a heroin addiction. Uh, sometimes it's LSD, and then these people are tripping out. Like like I said. Uh, earlier, it causes uh, heart palpitations, and it causes high blood pressure. Uh, th now, this can be a, a really serious problem. Some, sometimes when people take LSD, they think they're having a heart attack, and that's usually why they come into the emergency room. But we have no way of detecting that, unfortunately, uh, experience. That's just about it. <laughs> That's the only way to tell what the hell's going on with that guy. LSD is remarkably potent, creating a reaction uh, with 25 one millionth of a gram. Spaciness, decreased perception of time, mild euphoria. Uh, the effects appear 15 to 60 minutes after ingestion. And for this reason, a lot of people think when they take LSD, they go, but I'm not feeling anything. I'm not feeling anything. It takes, a, it takes a long time for that stuff to kick in. Uh, and by that time, a lot of times they're doing something they probably shouldn't be doing. Uh, they've decided to read a book or they've decided to watch a television show uh, or they're playing some strange music. And then all of a sudden the, the hallucinations uh, 
start uh, happening. And uh, if if they're not careful, if you're not careful with LSD, whatever your mood is, uh, is uh, that's that's what's going to happen to you. Uh, so with LSD, a lot of times people will get unhappy because they're not having a better, a stronger reaction, and then they have a bad trip. The effects peak at about two to four hours, uh, so it takes an hour for it to kick in, or it takes you know somewhere between fifteen and fifteen minutes and an hour to kick in, and then it uh, it peaks at about two to four hours, but it lasts for six to eight hours. So uh, when somebody's tripping. Uh, one of the things you have to do is, is somebody has to go along for the ride. Uh, somebody has to be there to, to keep them from, from hurting themselves or hurting somebody else or doing something crazy. A uh, user uh, returns to their normal state after about 10 to 12 hours. Uh, withdrawal from LSD is more of a mental state than a physical dependence. They may experience a downer because of a change of mood. Uh, fatal doses of effective dose, uh, as you can see, uh, heroin, uh, five times uh, the normal dosage will kill you. Nutmeg is right there. It's uh, you better stay away from that stuff. Uh, okay, so this, these are all the things that can kill you. Uh, it takes quite a bit. Uh, alcohol. Uh, ten times drunk is uh, can kill you. Cocaine uh, can kill you. Ripenol, ketamine. Uh, the only things that can't kill you are are uh, magic mushrooms, uh, psilocybin, LSD, and marijuana. You can't really overdose on on those guys. You could drink a, a whole glass full of, of marijuana. I'm sorry, of LSD, and it probably it probably wouldn't wouldn't hurt you. Because you only have can you can only react so much, uh, so you can't really overdose on it. And there you go, all the all the things that will kill you. Uh, the most dangerous is heroin, uh, nutmeg, datura, uh, isobutyl nitrite uh, can make your heart stop. GHB, which is the date rape drug. Where's ripenol? There's ripenol. The other date rape drug. So as you can see, you can have all these negative things. And if you take them with alcohol, you can you get a synergistic effect. LSD effects uh, include a rise in blood pressure and heart rate, a rise in, in body temperature, uh, dizziness, dilated pupils, uh, sweating. Uh, after image, uh, light trails known as the trailing phenomena, uh, sensory distortions, seeing sounds, feeling smells, hearing colors. Uh, dreaminess, depersonalization, altered mood, impaired concentration, and motivation. LSD activates a locus ceruleus, which causes the release of extra amounts of norepinephrine. Uh, the extra norepinephrine enhances alertness, causing the illusion of heightened awareness and introspection. LSD trippers often will lose their ability to express themselves verbally, which is not that funny. Uh, the greatest uh, danger is the impaired reasoning that the individual displays in the loss of judgment. And of course, all this stuff, uh, I've seen all this stuff in the emergency room, and it's really irritating when these people come in. They think they're, they're dying or something. And of course, you gotta stabilize them. But, and they have all of these, their blood pressure goes up, their heart rate uh, will go up. It doesn't get too bad, uh, and their body temperature will rise. So you need to make sure that they're taken care of. Usually it's when somebody takes LSD and there's nobody else there. Uh, they're trying to take it by themselves. They think they're dying. The user can suffer acute anxiety reactions uh, to the LSD known as bad trips. Uh, this is, is especially common for new users who aren't aware of the intensity of the euphoria or the possibility of panic that can be induced by the drug. Depersonalization, acute anxiety, paranoia, f fear of, of loss of control. People people do do strange things when they're on LSD. Uh, sometimes they'll uh, they'll jump off a building because they think they can fly. Uh, they'll shoot somebody because they see that that person is as uh, some kind of a monster or something. Uh, especially somebody that's paranoid before they take it. A uh, real bad idea to use LSD.
Uh, delusions of persecution, feelings of grandeur. Suicide by mistake is not uncommon, and as I said. Sometimes they think they can fly, so they jump off a building. LSD can be dangerous for people with pre-existing <clears throat> mental conditions or mental instability. Using LSD can aggravate the already existing conditions, leading to more severe mental disturbances. Use of LSD has also led to experiencing their mental illness uh, at a younger age. LSD can lead to relapse for an individual recovering from a psychotic episode or, or major depression. Uh, individuals without mental illnesses might be thrown into temporary but prolonged psychotic reactions or severe depression that requires treatment. Some individuals have been known to experience prolonged trips that can be emotionally crippling and last for years. Hallucinogen persisting perception disorder is uh, pre-experiencing mental flashback, re-experiencing mental flashbacks of sensations from a previous trip. It is usually from a bad trip. Uh, HPPD can uh, occur months or even years after the last use of, use of LSD. The flashbacks recreate the original experience and can be triggered by stress, use of another psychoactive substance, which is the dumbest thing you can do if you're having flashbacks. Stop smoking pot. <laughs> <laughs> because it'll kick you into one of these HPPD situations, uh, the flashbacks. H or, or exercise can do it as well. HPPD uh, seems to have a strong heredit uh, hereditary component and results in anxiety and panic, of course. Some people suffer from long-term intermittent or continuous HPPD, where their flashbacks occur on a chronic basis. This type of HPPD uh, may resolve itself in five years, or may persist indefinitely, resulting in difficulty reading, memory problems, color confusion, halos around objects, visual after images or trails, intensified colors, uh, macro macropsia or micropsia uh, objects appearing abnormally large or abnormally small, illusions of movement, geometric uh, pseudo hallucinations, uh, flashes of color. Uh, imagined images and floaters in your eye. Uh, some people say that they can see auras, man, uh, and a lot of times it has to do with uh, with LSD. They can see auras around people. HPPD can uh, be caused by other psychedelics besides LSD, though it is most common with LSD. It can also be seen in MDMA, MDA, which is a form of MDMA. Mescaline, DMT, uh, PCP, uh, marijuana, and psilocybin. Magic mushrooms, marijuana, uh, phenocyclidine, or, or angel dust. Uh, this stuff we don't see in the United States a whole lot. Mescaline, of course, is peyote. Uh, and these two are ecstasy. Flashbacks occur in from 23 to 64% of regular LSD loser, users. Uh, we can treat it with Zoloft, clonidine, naltrexone. Uh, and uh, that sometimes will work. LSD does not produce compulsive drug-seeking behavior, thus it is not considered addictive. Tolerance uh, develops rapidly, and some users have reported as many as 500 trips in their lifetime. The dependence is probably psychological instead of physical. There are 75 different varieties of mushrooms that contain uh, the active ingredient psilocybin and psilocin, they grow in Mexico, the United States, South America, Southeast Asia, and Europe, and have been used since before recorded history. They were especially important to the Aztec and Toltec religions in Mexico and Central America. These substances are still being used among uh, Mazatec, uh, Kol, and Lacandon uh, Mayan shamans. Uh, when I was in Guatemala, uh, we were in Guatemala. Yeah, we were in Guatemala. And uh, uh, every Tuesday and Friday, they had, the shamans used the uh, uh, cathedral steps uh, to, do their, to do their work. Uh, we had uh, one individual. Uh, we, we went on a, a Fulbright uh, trip to uh, Guatemala and Peru. And we had one individual that wanted to experience the shaman, the uh, Lacandon uh, Mayan shamans but uh, of course we had we had places to go and people to see and 
One of them was not <laughs> dealing with the shamans. Uh, the chemical structure of psilocybin is very similar to LSD. However, mushrooms vary widely in strength with some having as much as 10 times the level of psilocybin as weak ones. Fresh uh, mushrooms are more potent than dried ones. Psilocybin is broken down into psilocin in the stomach. Uh, psilocybin is twice as potent as psilocin and crosses the brain-blood barrier uh, more readily. Psychic effects uh, begin at dosages of 30 to 60 milligrams. The effects last for three to six hours, and the effects are nausea and other physical responses before the psychedelic effects begin, altered uh, states of consciousness, uh, changes in sight, hearing, taste, and touch, uh, visceral effects, less disassociation and panic than with LSD, normally anyway. One of the um, uh, what is oh, uh, one of the Bridget Jones movies showed that she ate something and and there was uh, there were magic mushrooms in the uh, in whatever she ate uh, and of course that you wouldn't want to put this stuff in your uh, in food because people would throw it up. Many of the psychedelic effects are caused by the disruption of neurotransmitters. Uh, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine uh, oversensitizes the senses. Uh, some people try to harvest their own magic mushrooms, <clears throat> but the similarity between mushrooms that contain psilocybin and those that are poisonous uh, make picking them uh, way too dangerous. You really need to know what you're doing. Uh, Ibogaine uh, comes from the African shrub Tabernanthi iboga. Uh, at uh, low doses, the substance acts as a stimulant. At higher doses, the substance produces a long-acting psychedelic-like catatonic reaction that can last up to two days. Ibogaine is used by the Bwiti uh, tribe of the Bon uh, to remain motionless while hunting. The Bwiti tribe is uh, a tribe of pygmies, by the way. Uh, these hunters also claim to have ancestral visions while under the drug spell. This drug has been considered as a treatment for heroin, alcohol, and antique cocaine addiction as it reduces withdrawal symptoms. However, neurotoxicity has been observed with its use in this capacity. Morning glory seeds uh, contain lysergic acid amide, which can be used to make lysergic acid diethylamide. Lysergic acid amide has one-tenth the potency of LSD. It requires several hundred morning glory seeds to get an effect, and this usually causes a great deal of nausea. To exacerbate this effect, the seeds are, are that are sold commercially are dipped in a toxin that induces vomiting. So there you go. The effect of morning glory seeds include sensory disturbances and mood changes, nausea and vomiting, drowsiness, headache, and chills. Uh, di dimethyltryptamine uh, DMT was first synthesized in 1931 and it's found in several South American trees, vines, shrubs, and mushrooms. <clears throat> the psychedelic substance in DMT is similar in structure to psilocin and is usually smoked, snorted, or in injected as it is deactivated by stomach acids and causes visual hallucinations, loss of awareness of the individual's surroundings, <clears throat> the high lasts for 10 to 60 minutes. A similar response comes from the venom of the Sonoran Desert toad. And, of course, the Sonoran Desert is in your, <laughs> it's right around where you guys live. So I wouldn't go around licking toads if I were you. Uh, foxy. Let's just call this stuff Foxy and AMT. Uh, that's, those words are way too long to be reading. There are two psychedelic uh, tryptamines. Uh, these drugs aren't very popular, but uh, have been found in raves in Arizona, California, Florida, and New York. The effects of the tryptamines are similar to other rave drugs, euphoria, empathy, uh, visual and auditory disturbances, uh, formication. Uh, formication is where you feel like you've got bugs crawling all over you. Uh, paranoia, emotional distress, nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. The effects from small doses will last for, uh, for three to six hours and heavier doses for 12 to 24 hours.
Ayahuasca or Yage is a psychedelic drink made from the bark, leaves, and vines of, of the Banisteriopsis uh, species of the Amazon jungle. This drink causes intense vomiting and diarrhea before it deposits the drinker in a dreamlike state for about 10 hours. Select tribes of natives in Peru, Brazil, and Ecuador use the drug for divination, prophecy, sorcery, and medicinal purposes. Cults have sprung up in Brazil around the use of this substance. The active ingredient is indole alkaloid harmaline. This group of psychedelic, the phenyl uh, al alkamines uh, psychedelics, are related to adrenaline and, and amphetamines, though their effects tend to last longer. Uh, the best known phenylalkylamine uh, psychedelic is peyote or mescaline. <clears throat> mescaline is the active ingredient in the peyote cactus and the San Pedro cactus. The use of these cacti for religious insight and rituals dates back four to five thousand years among the native tribes of Mexico, Central, and South America. In North America, 50 tribal groups are still using the drug for religious purposes in the 20th century. In 1996, the Supreme Court ruled that peyote usage by Native American Church or North of North America was protected by the Constitution. Mescaline is found in the small gray-green crowns of the peyote cactus. They can be used dried or fresh. Uh, the buttons can either be eaten or boiled in a tea. Uh, the mescaline is bitter and nauseating and may take as many as seven to eight buttons to elicit a response. The effects last up to 12 hours and results in colorful visions and hallucinations. MDA and MDMA, ecstasy, the rave drugs, were synthesized in 1910. These drugs have similar chemical structures to mescaline. These drugs produce the effects, feelings of well-being, euphoria, and psychedelic stimulatory effects. MDA has, was popular as the love drug in the 1960s and 1970s, as it was uh, supposed to increase your libido. It was later found to destroy serotonin-producing neurons in the brain, along with a few overdose deaths made it less popular, as you can imagine. MDMA or ecstasy, also known as Molly, I evidently I didn't realize that, um, was developed uh, to produce... <coughs> The same effects as MDA, MDA, but with fewer side effects. MDMA lasts for 4 to 6 hours compared to the 10 to 12 hours for MDA. It is popular as a rave drug as it is reputed to make the individual dance and interact with the other people at a party. Uh, the other drug was tested. Uh, the drug was tested for its psychological impact by the U.S. Army in the 1950s, but instead was touted as a drug that would help therapists tap in to the emotions and, mem and memories of repressed patients. It was used in this capacity in the late 70s and early 80s. The drug is found to create empathy in the user. Uh, street vendors change the emotion empathy to ecstasy to improve their sales. People uh, taking MDMA experience intensified senses of smell, which makes the use of, of strong smelling substances like Vicks inhalers and Tiger Bomb popular at raves. Glow sticks are waved in front of ecstasy users to create a mesmerizing effect. MDMA tablets uh, cost pirate manufacturers from 50 cents to $2 to make, but they sell for as much as $10 to $70 depending on the market. The DEA reports that 30 to 50% of MDMA sold isn't MDMA at all. Sorry. The effects of MDMA are similar to amphetamines that begin to appear about 30 minutes after ingestion. Uh, it's, usually, they, it's usually cold capsules, by the way, histamines, because histamines will give you, or antihistamines, I'm sorry, antihistamines will give you some kind of an effect. It's not really that psychedelic, but I guess if, if uh, they get the placebo effect from it. Uh, increased heart rate and respiration, excess energy, fainting, sweating, chills, hyperactivity, tightening of muscles, especially jaw muscles, and clenching of the teeth. Uh, baby pacifiers and lollipops are often used to prevent tooth damage. Uh, infrequent use leads to heightened responses. Heavier use leads to rapid tolerance.
Overuse of MDMA may result in dehydration that may result in water toxicity and electrolyte imbalance. Uh, pupil dilation, blurred vision and eyelid twitching, headaches, agitation, nausea, and anorexia. Uh, serotonergic uh, axon apoptosis uh, results in thought and memory uh, impairment. Uh, rapid and potentially dangerous heart rhythm um, uh, problems. Seizure activity, stroke, cardiovascular failure, and coma. Malignant type hyperthermia that can result in muscle damage, renal failure, and even blood coagulation. Uh, I've only been in the emergency room once uh, during a rave or while they were having raves. Uh, real strange. A lot of people came in. Most of it had to do with hyperthermia. Uh, we, we just uh, put uh, IVs in their arms. Uh, and that pretty much took care of things. Um, only that we only had a couple people that came in with seizures. I'm trying to think how we treated them. Uh, anyway, the, I've only seen this once, and it, it wasn't a lot of fun. We we got about oh golly, fifty maybe seventy five patients that night, and and they were all the same. <clears throat> and strangely, and unfortunately, of course, uh, well, of course, not of course. But the way it usually works in the emergency room, whenever you get an influx of one thing, you get an influx of another thing. And we had, we had like we had multiple uh, automobile accidents that night. We were the trauma center. Uh, this was in Omaha. I worked at St. Joseph Hospital, but I also worked at Bergen Mercy Hospital in the emergency room. <clears throat> and that night, I was working in uh, at uh, St. Joseph and. Uh, there was a rave downtown, and unfortunately, downtown was about half a mile away. <laughs> so uh, we started getting the influx, and then they had to to uh, the other trauma center. Uh, there's three trauma centers in town, and the other trauma center started picking people up. Then we had to open up the the third trauma center. Uh, we had a run on things. It was quite fun. We all got. Uh, we got about somewhere between 50 and 75. Uh, they got in the 20s, in the 20, 25, 30 range. Uh, the other two, the other two places. Uh, fun, fun, fun. And it was still going on. Uh, this was on a Friday night. Uh, and I worked that weekend at Bergen Mercy. And uh, they were, we were still getting people coming in. Uh, on uh, Saturday and Sunday. It's a mess. Uh, 20 to 60 minutes after ingesting MDMA and lasting for three to four or more hours, the drug changes the feelings of the user, uh, feelings of happiness, clarity, peace, pleasure, altered sensory perceptions without depersonalization or detachment from the environment, non-sexual empathy for others, and people claim that uh, they became it's like an orgy, uh, but not on MDMA, <laughs> they must have been on something else, <laughs> uh, and that's that's really possible. I mean, people will will uh, sell you anything if they can make money from it. Uh, so it's possible that they were on something else. Uh, self awareness, heightened self esteem, uh, open mindedness, acceptance, uh, intimacy. MDMA psychic uh, effects are probably produced by its overstimulation of serotonergic producing neurons in the brain. Now, this is really important because remember, your serotonin uh, controls your sex drive, uh, and it controls it by dampening it. It slows it down. This is one of the reasons why people don't want to take uh, selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors, because it ruins their sex life. Okay, so we've got MDMA, which, which forces this mass of, of serotonin into your system. And these people are claiming that they were, that they were or, orgiastic uh, when they were on MDMA. That's, that's impossible. It's, biochemically, it, it, shouldn't, it can't happen. Uh, MDMA forces the discharge of reservoirs of serotonin into the synaptic clefts, which stop your libido completely, right? dead on, on its tracks. If more MDMA is taken uh, when the effects begin to wear off, the response is a reduced reaction. Serotonin receptors may retreat into the cell membranes to avoid damage. 
and this is known as down regulation. And this is the basic problem with MDMA. MDMA, yeah, forces all the serotonin into your system. You're really happy. You're really happy. You're really happy uh, for 10 or 12 hours. Then what happens after the the uh, uh, the MDMA wears off? After it wears off, <clears throat> and it's, you've stopped this flood of serotonin. Now you've got a down regulation of your serotonin receptor sites, which means now you can't be happy because all those, all those serotonin receptor sites don't exist anymore. Uh, it may take up to a week to regenerate enough serotonin to produce the same effect. Uh, so you can't... Uh, what people will do... This is what happened in Europe. Uh, what people would do, they'd rave on a weekend, then they would uh, take the week off, and then they would rave on the weekend, on the next weekend, and they just rave every weekend. <clears throat> After use, MDMA users may experience extreme depression and suicidal thoughts, and this is a basic problem with MDMA. Uh, because of the uh, downregulation of serotonin receptors, tolerance to the drug is fairly rapid. Because of the questionable content of tablets said to be MDMA, polydrug use is common. LSD is taken with the MDMA in, uh, to increase the time the MDMA effects last. This is known as candy flipping, flip-flopping, X and L's, and candy snaps. MDMA with hydrocodone, oxycontin, uh, codeine, heroin can enhance the euphoric effects of both drugs, feelings of both drugs. But remember, two drugs... <laughs> Two drugs that just about wipe out your libido. One of them is MDMA, and the other is is, mo is uh, your opiates. GHB with MDMA is a form of modern day speedballing. GHB, of course, is a rape, date rape drug. Uh, nitrous oxide and MDMA intensifies the inhalant rush. Uh, Prozac and MDMA are used together to buffer the serotonergic uh, cells from toxicity. Uh, here's the, the strange one. MDMA and Viagra are taken together to enhance sexuality and refer, as referred to as sextasy. Now, d does this work? Well, one of the problems with Viagra is Viagra lowers your libido as well. It makes men uh, able to have erections, but they don't have the same desire that they had before. Now, MDMA, of course, <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> MDMA increases your serotonin level, which reduces, reduces your libido uh, also. So if you take the two of them together, sure, he can have sex. He doesn't feel like it, but he'll, ha he'll go ahead and have sex as, because he, has a, a, he can get an erection now. As weird as that seems. <clears throat> okay, anyway. MDMA and Viagra. MDMA has been maintained because of its popularity with people who attend raves, dance parties, and electronic dance clubs. Rave and club music is also known as techno and, and maintains a trance-like beat that may be accompanied by light shows and laser, laser light effects. These events are usually accompanied with the use of many illegal drugs that include MDMA, nitrous oxide, GHB or GBL, dextromethorphan, uh, ketamine, PCP, Nexus, and any street drugs other than alcohol. Problems at raves usually come from other drug use, alcohol, methamphetamines, LSD, GHB, and ketamine. MDMA effects uh, that can cause problems are usually in the form of overheating, falling injuries, passing out, bad psychedelic experiences, and mental destabilization. Now remember, the people taking this stuff are not always the most lucid people in the world. So if they've already got a mental illness, if you take MDMA and increase your serotonin to the extent that you do, remember one of the problems uh, after this stuff burns off is that you uh, become you can, can can become depressed and suicidal. That's not a good combination. Two drugs that are popular as rave drugs in the Netherlands are 2CT7 and 2CT2, also known as Blue Mystic, Tripstasy, Seventh Heaven. 7-Up, Lucky 7, and Beautiful. The drugs are psychostimulants and cause the, effect, the following effects. It induces delirium, heightened sensitivity, increases your awareness, uh, causes nausea and vomiting, and of course uh, your heart rate increases a great deal. Nexus is the, the trade uh, name for 2CB or 4-Bromo-2 
5 dextro dextroxyphenylethylamine. It creates mild stimulation at low doses and intense psychedelic experiences at high doses. This is an amphetamine-like chemical, and it's known as Lexus. SDP is a street name for that, and is also known as DOM, Serenity, Tranquility, and Peace. It is similar to MDA as it produces a 12-hour intoxication that results in intense stimulation, mild psychedelic, psychedelic reactions. It is notorious for producing bad trips. PMA or 4MA is the street name for peroxymethyloxyamphetamine. It, its stimulant effect only lasts an hour and leaves the user with a sudden rise in blood pressure, distinct after images, pins and needles tingly feeling like a chill or a person's hair standing on end, seizures, hyperthermia, coagulation of blood, and muscle damage. Bromo dragonfly is also known as bee fly and fly. It is a powerful hallucinogen that has a longer duration than any other hallucinogen, sometimes lasting for days. It produces hallucinations, delusions, and memory loss. Belladonna is a small plant found throughout the world that has been used for eons by women wanting to make their eyes more striking. It dilates your pupils. Belladonna is Italian for beautiful woman. Belladonna blocks acetylcholine receptors in the central nervous system to produce delirium, inability to focus your eyes, tachycardia, intense thirst, hyperthermia to the po uh, point of death, hallucinations, separation from reality, and sleep for up to 48 hours. Belladonna, this is, if you've ever had an amaryllis, that, an, the amaryllis is, is uh, belladonna. Jimson weed is a psychedelic plant found throughout the United States where its seeds are eaten, brewed in a, into a tree or uh, into a tea, or the leaves are made into cigarettes and is also known as thorn apple, angel's trumpet, Jamestown weed, mad apple, moon flower, and stink weed, and it does stink. Uh, the substance produces the following effects, jerky movements, tachycardia, hypotension, hallucinations of snakes, spiders, and lizards. I'm not sure why anybody wants to do these things. Okay, that's what a Jimson weed looks like. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. I've seen it on the trail uh, going around Salee, so I'm sure that uh, you've probably seen this and didn't know what it was. That's a thorn apple. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, there it is. That's that's the thing you, you grab a hold of. That's the thing you brew into a tea. There it is right there. Okay. Ketamine is an anesthetic used with both humans and animals and is a close chemical relative to PCP, though ketamine is shorter lived than PCP. Ketamine was the most widely used anesthetic during the Vietnam War. And I, that's where I came in contact with this, uh, with ketamine. Uh, not they didn't use it on me, not that I'm aware of, but uh, I was working as I was I was a medic. It was liked uh, because it does not affect the patient's breathing, but has the additional side effect of dissociation, feeling like you are outside yourself. And of course, a lot of people coming back from Vietnam, especially if they're wounded uh, and were treated in Vietnam, a lot of times they uh, they had these they they had these. Um, uh, reactions uh, to what happened to them, the dissociation. And sometimes the dissociation didn't go away. You know, the more the more they were wounded, uh, the more likely that they would have uh, uh, these uh, dissociative uh, episodes. The liquid is crystallized and the crystals are smoked in a pipe or snorted uh, to the effect, uh, effect of dreamlike intoxication, sensitization, uh, sensation of body-mind separation, uh, dizziness, free-floating giddiness, slurred speech, impaired muscular coordination. Uh, you got to remember that one of the, if you've ever had surgery uh, anywhere, uh, <laughs> one of the things that they do is they put you in recovery, and they want they they're waiting for you to cough is what they're waiting for you to do. Um, <clears throat> the great thing about ketamine was that it didn't really affect their breathing, the the breathing of the individual. So you could get them out of recovery faster. Now that was really important when you're dealing 
or the combat situation. If you've ever watched MASH or any movie about uh, uh, surgery uh, during during war, uh, one of the problems is that, that they're in recovery for an extended length of time. And this can be a problem. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the great things about ketamine was you could uh, do the surgery. Uh, they didn't feel a, a thing. Uh, then you could put them in recovery, and and they their breathing was normal. So a lot of times they and there was a lot of smoking of, of there was smoking of pot over there, but there was a lot of smoking of cigarettes. So you actually gave them with our with our K rations. Uh, so you got uh, cigarettes every day. So there's a lot of people smoking, and, and of course, uh, to, uh, tobacco irritates your lungs. Uh, so you could get people out of recovery really, relatively fast because they would start coughing. Uh, you know, once they came out of the, the ketamine, uh, or once they came out of the out of the anesthetic, they would uh, need to clear their lungs, and they'd just start coughing. And that's how you know to get them out of uh, recovery is when they start coughing. And that was my job, <laughs> carrying stretchers of people that were coming out of surgery. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, that's that's Vietnam. There you go. Heavy doses of ketamine produce the psychedelic experience known as being in a K-hole, where the individual feels as if they are having an out-of-body, near-death experience of depersonalization, hallucination, delirium, bizarre or mystical uh, experiences, uh, they can feel no pain, uh, respiratory depression, uh, increased heart rate and blood pressure, combative or, uh, or belligerent behavior, and we saw this, of course, and this is the, the problem with it. Uh, that's why we would put them, um, we would put, put them in a ward, we'd have recovery, then we'd put them in a ward uh, with male nurses uh, so that they could wrestle with these guys. Uh, convulsions and rarely coma. Uh, th this is what happens when you use it incorrectly. Anesthetics, uh, when we're using it as an anesthetic, of course we didn't have any of these reactions except the depersonalization uh, and sometimes the combative behavior when they came out of it. Phenocyclidine hydrochloride or PCP uh, was developed in the 1950s as a general anesthetic for humans. Unfortunately, the drug had toxic hallucinogenic side effects, and it was relegated to the use with animals only. It is also known as angel dust. Uh, that if you see it on television, they talk, they call it angel dust. Peeps, KJ, Sherman's, or ozone. It is sometimes sprinkled on marijuana and smoked in a joint. It can be smoked, snorted, swallowed, or injected. Uh, PCP seems to disconnect sensory messages sent to the, the central nervous system, uh, dissolving inhibitions, uh, deadening your pain, strange feeling of bo mind-body separation, forgetful forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, aggressive and violent behavior, and this is the biggest problem with PCP. You can't tell if somebody's on this stuff. You can't hurt them is the problem, so you can't stop them. Uh, so if they get violent, uh, you know, you, you have to almost have to kill them in order to stop them. Depersonalization, 40% report hallucinations, tactile, visual, or, or auditory. Uh, damage can be done by the individual to themselves by overstressing muscles, sinews, and flesh. Low doses of PCP produce mild depression and then stimulation and last for one to two hours. Moderate doses of PCP produce an intense sensory uh, deprived state and lasts for four to six hours. Heavy doses of PCP produce catatonia, coma, convulsions, and kidney failure and can last for up to 48 hours. The general drug uh, using population does not routinely use PCP because of the high uh, frequency of bad trips. Anterograde and retrograde amnesia is common with the use of PCP. It really screws with your memory. Salvia divinorum is a member of the mint family and produces psychedelic effects when ingested. It creates dreamlike hallucinations, occasional delirium, and out-of-body sensations. When smoked, the effects last for only 7 to 10 minutes. The key ingredient is salvorin. Uh, at present, the drug is legal, but under review for scheduling. And that's what it looks like. You may have it in your 
in your garden. A lot of you guys don't, but I do. <laughs> anyway. Amanita mushrooms have been used for rituals as far back as Neanderthal man. Uh, the mushroom causes dreamy intoxication, hallucinations, delirious excitement, physical toxic effects that can be deadly. Uh, the effects start 30 minutes after ingestion and last for 48 hour, four to eight hours. Uh, active ingredient resembles the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. Uh, too much of the mushroom will make the user sick as if they had food poisoning. And I've seen this, uh, people coming into the emergency room throwing up. Um, and what, the, what are they throwing up? They're throwing up mushrooms. And that's what they look like. They're fairly obvious. Um, that didn't work, did it? So, wait a second. Uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, Dextromethorphan is active ingredient in many cough syrups, uh, including Robitussin DM, Coracidin, and Romilar. Uh, 10 to 15 times the recommended dose can give the user uh, euphoria. I still can't read it. Let me see if I can fix this. Uh, design format background. <clears throat> still blacked out. Okay, anyway, fever, itching, uh, decreased orgasms, uh, dilated pupils, loss of coordination, auditory and visual hallucinations. I can't read that one. Uh, tachycardia, acute something reactions. Anyway, yeah, it gives you, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. Uh, so how much is there in a bottle of uh, coracidin? Wait a second. There you go. How much? How many? How many? It's it's a bottle. Okay, that's that's ten to fifteen times. Let me go back to this right here. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's that's about. There's ten to fifteen doses in any in any bottle. So if you if you drink the whole bottle, then you're going to get all these horrible uh, reactions from the dextromethorphan. Okay, here's the, as you remember, uh, one of the easiest things to overdose on is nutmeg. Nutmeg and mace uh, come from the nutmeg tree. Uh, in heavy doses, they can cause mild floating sensations to, to full-blown delirium. If you put nutmeg in your pumpkin pie, you're not going to have this. You're not going to get enough. <laughs> Such heavy doses do have their price, bad hangover, and severely upset stomach. Now, in prison, sometimes they can't get a hold of, of real drugs, so they'll, they'll use nutmeg. This combination is rarely used outside of prisons where other psychedelics are unavailable. And that's what, this is what mace looks like. Mace is a protective layer around the nutmeg nut. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah, anyway, mace. Uh, and that's an answer to a question on your quiz, by the way. Dextromethorphan is as well. Uh, marijuana cannabis or hemp plants. Are, now we're going to talk about marijuana. Uh, about half the chapter is about deals with marijuana. Marijuana cannabis or hemp plants are used to make powerfully strong fibers for rope, edible seeds, oil that can be used as a fuel or lubricant, medicinal substances. It is illegal in most countries around the world. Cannabis is a plant that was developed in China and spread throughout the world for its medicinal properties and powerful fibers. Cannabis appears in writings uh, from ancient China and India. In India, it appears in the Vedas as a, as a divine nectar. Sorry about the dog. Cannabis in the form of hemp was brought to the United States before the Revolutionary War to grow for the ships uh, of the Royal Navy. George Washington worked to expand his holdings 
to grow more and more hemp for profit. Uh, hemp wasn't used for the psychoactive effects until after World War I, when migrant workers from Mexico introduced smoking the wacky weed uh, to other poor immigrant minority groups. The psychoactive properties of marijuana became popular during Prohibition, when the still legal pot was smoked for its psycho uh, psychoactive effects by those who sought a new high. In 1937, marijuana was declared illegal. Hemp was legally grown during World War II, and the government even experimented with cannabis extracts to produce a truth drug. Uh, okay. Hemp is legally grown in France, Italy, and Yugoslavia, the Yugoslavian countries, uh, England and Canada, to make paper, textiles, and rope. Marijuana is legally used uh, in the Netherlands in coffee shops. Uh, 160 uh, million people worldwide use some form of marijuana. Going into the 1960s, only 2% of the people in the United States had tried an, an illegal drug. This is something that you need to think about. Uh, people think that every, everybody in the 60s were, were smoking dope. The reality was nobody was smoking dope uh, until the uh, Vietnam War. However, the counterculture movement in the United States that grew out of the civil rights and anti-war movements of the Vietnam era increased drug experimentation exponentially. By 1979, 68 million Americans had tried marijuana and 23 million used it on a monthly basis. Attempted control of substance waxed and waned over the years, but a resurgence of marijuana prohibition in the 1990s led to a marked drop in its usage. By 1992, just over 7 million people reported using marijuana on a monthly basis. By 2005, the number of monthly marijuana users doubled. In 2005, 3,200,000 people used marijuana on a daily basis. Every year, 80,000 emergency room visits occur because of marijuana usage. 44% of male adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 32% of female or, uh, adult arrestees test positive for marijuana. 57% of juvenile male arrestees test positive for marijuana. 32% of juvenile female arrestees test positive for marijuana. The plant grown to make fiber is low in psychoactive substances and is referred to as hemp. The plants grown to produce psychoactive resins are referred to as marijuana and are low in fibrous structure. And there's the difference right there. That's what hemp looks like, and this is what marijuana looks like. There's a pretty big difference. I got this stuff in my fence row, uh, the hemp hemp plant. It's also known as ditch weed. There's hardly any there's hardly any uh, THC in it. So it's and it grows really tall and strong. It doesn't look like. Uh, okay, marijuana versus hemp. Yeah, there you go. So you can see uh, none of my plants look anything like this. They look like this. And there's a difference between hemp and marijuana. Uh, street names for marijuana include pot muggles, and this is where, it's, uh, well, we won't go into that. 420, Mary Jane uh, Griffa, Bud, Herb, uh, Chronic, Dank, African Black, Panama Red, Acapulco Gold. These are all types of, of marijuana. Uh, grass, leaf, ganja, charis, sins, weed, dope, dubage, dekine, Maui Wowie is another type of, mar of, of uh, pot. Humboldt Green is another type. BC Bud, that's British Columbia Bud, is another type. Uh, Buddha Thai is really strong. Marijuana, if I understand correctly. Uh, marijuana comes in three distinct species, but hundreds of hybrids. Cannabis sativa is the most common species. It's grown in tropical, subtropical, and temperate regions. It grows 5 to 20 feet tall. Uh, a plant grows from 1 to 5 pounds of buds and smokable leaves. Uh, this would be hemp. Hemp is a cannabis sativa. Cannabis indica grows in Southeast Asia. It's shorter and bushier plant and is generally stronger smelling. This is usually grown to produce hashish. Uh, Cannabis ruderalis is a thin, small plant. 
it has very little THC and isn't used for hemp or for marijuana. Most marijuana is grown using the Cincinnati growing system where male and female plants are separated before pollination can occur. By removing the plants before pollination can take place, the plants produce no seeds and the THC is stronger. This method is used with both the cannabis sativa and the indica plants. Dried marijuana leaves, buds, and flowers are crushed and rolled into cigarettes known as joints. Marijuana can be smoked in pipes. In India, marijuana is divided into three different strengths depending on the part of the plant smoked. Bong has the lowest potency and uses the stems and the leaves. Ganja is stronger and is from the uh, stronger leaves and flowering tops. Charis is the concentrated resin and is most potent. This is uh, charis and, and hashish are the same thing. Ganja is what most people are smoking in the United States. Bong, of course, has very is, is, is less potent. That's what bong looks like. You can see all the all the stems and leaves in here. That's bong. That's what ganja looks like. <clears throat> And that's the re resin. Looks like <laughs> looks like turds, doesn't it? Mouse turds. <laughs> anyway, that's what it looks like. Depending on the region of the country, only 10 to 50 percent of marijuana consumed in the United States is homegrown. Most of the marijuana being smoked is smuggled in from Mexico and is either grown in Mexico or Colombia. In the United States, invented growers have gone to more and more creative ways of producing their product from growing fields of the plant in the wilderness back areas of national forests to growing plants in grow houses using grow lights and hydroponics. The typical marijuana plant contains over 420 chemicals. 30 of them have been found to be psychoactive. The most potent chemical is Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, when ingested, the psychoactive chemicals in the marijuana are converted by the liver into 60 other metabolites, some of which are psychoactive as well. Only about 20% of the THC in the joint is retained by the body, but the longer the smoke is held in the lungs, the more THC that is absorbed and the stronger the high. Modern marijuana contains as much as 4-25% to THC as compared to the 60s average of 1-3%. Most of the research from the past is based on the weaker marijuana, and this is one of the problems with, with what's going on uh, today. Uh, a lot of the research that we're, we're dealing with uh, says marijuana can't hurt you. Uh, that's using this stuff right here, the 1 to 3 percent. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a lot stronger than it used to be, uh, 4 to 25 percent. Much to researchers' surprise, marijuana has its own receptors in the brain or at least that's what researchers thought when they discovered new receptors in the brain when doing marijuana research in the 1990s. Hence the name endogenous cannabinoid neuro, uh, neurotransmitters, or CBs. The first endogenous neurotransmitters that was found to occupy the cannabinoid receptors was anandamide. CB1 receptors are found mostly in the brain, the hippocampus, the amygdala, the basal ganglia, including the nucleus accumbens, and the cerebellum. CB2 receptors are found mostly in the immune system and lower body, and there, this is one of the reasons why we have a problem. Uh, the hippocampus has to do with memory, and of course when people are smoking pot, uh, they, their short-term memory goes out the window. The amygdala, this is a good thing because it, it keeps people from being, uh, from being um, aggressive. Uh, basal ganglia, uh, this is part of the, the, including the nucleus accumbens, this is what get, makes you feel good, okay? Uh, and the cerebellum, this is one of the reasons why you should never smoke pot and try to do something physical. Uh, I was in a softball tournament one time. <laughs> this, it, was a, it was one of those all-night softball tournaments, the dumbest thing in the world. It was a co-ed tournament. Uh, so here we are, we're playing this team, and actually they were pretty good. Uh, they could have beaten us, uh, but they had smoked pot. All these people had smoked pot. Now this was okay. You know, you can go ahead and smoke pot, but don't play softball. Uh, and of course, you know, the game started, 
and they couldn't catch the ball. They couldn't throw the ball. Uh, I, I can remember there was one outfielder. Uh, I hit a line drive to her. Uh, she didn't catch it, a bit, and it hit in front of her, and it bounced, and it hit her. It hit her in the stomach, and of course it hurt. And then she picked it up and tried to throw it, and she kept, it kept flying off the ends of her fingers. And of course, you know, every time I saw the fact that she couldn't get the ball in, and their shortstop is going out. This is in left field. The shortstop is going out to get the ball, and she kept trying to throw the ball to him. And it just kept flying up and hitting her in the head, you know. And she'd laugh. She thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Anyway, I made a home run. <laughs> no, it was a single with a three base error. Anyway, that's not. It wasn't that funny because we had to stop the game because they were, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't get their glove up fast enough to catch the ball, and we were hitting, you know, line drives at them. It was just too dangerous. That was the last game I played. I, I thought that was stupid. And uh, I went home <laughs> after that. And we won the tournament, but uh, I wasn't there. CB2 receptors are found mostly in the immune system and the lower body. Uh, CB1, and this is one of the reasons why uh, marijuana messes with your immune system. It depletes your immune system, and this is not a good thing. Uh, so you can't remember anything, you're not as aggressive, makes you feel good, but you can't move around very well, and it screws up your immune system. CB1 receptors are in areas that integrate sensory experiences with emotions. It controls your learning, controls your memory, controls a sense of novelty, and controls motor coordination. The opioids and cocaine overdoses are dangerous because they suppress the heart rate and respiratory functions of the brainstem. At the same time, it is almost impossible to overdose with marijuana because the anandamide receptors that it utilizes merely increase or decrease our minds to sensory inputs. Marijuana is a vasodilator and, ca and so causes bloodshot eyes when it is used. Uh, this often leads to conjunctivitis. It also causes uh, physical relaxation or sedation, some pain control, coughing from lung ir irritation, an increase in appetite, a small to moderate loss of muscle coordination, uh, increased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, decreased eye pressure, decreased nausea, decreased ability to track movement, and an afterimage of a moving object. Mar marijuana causes a temporary, small te temporary disruption of the male hormone testosterone. While this is of little importance to most males, for those with hormone imbalance or those going through puberty, it can cause a lot of problems. The testosterone decrease can also cause a lowered sperm count and sperm motility in chronic pot users, making it less likely that they will be able to reproduce. Marijuana makes people hungry, uh, called the munchies, uh, when THC occupies the CB1 receptors in the hypothalamus that indicates satiation. Marijuana doesn't sharpen an individual's sense of taste. Marijuana also gives the individual a feeling of confusion about where they are and eventually makes them feel deja vu, along with drow being drowsy, being, feeling aloof, and uh, difficulty concentrating. If you've ever been around somebody that's smoking pot, they really don't want to mess with you. They, most of their focus is inside, not outside. They, and they, they're not getting a lot of sensory input anyway. Uh, so they they do tend to uh, kind of curl up in a ball and, and ignore everybody. With the advent of marijuana high and THC, these varieties have more extreme effects. Uh, giddiness, increased alertness to the point of hypervigilance, major distortions of time, major di distortions of color, major distortions of sound, sensation of movement under the user's feet, visual Ill illusions, hallucinations, paranoia, uh, depersonal, depersonalization. Marijuana users tend to act more empathic uh, to others' feelings when under the influence of the drug. Marijuana also makes the user more suggestible. Uh, the main organ in the brain that is affected by marijuana is the amygdala, which regulates your appetite, your pain, uh, anxiety, fear, suppression of painful memories, and the sense of novelty. When an individual uses marijuana, the THC artificially stimulates the amygdala, making even the most mundane objects 
and ideas interesting. If the individual overstimulates the B, uh, CB1 receptors, these cells will downregulate, uh, sometimes reducing these receptors by 70%. When the individual isn't stoned, this uh, reduction of CB1 receptors will result in the loss of novelty. Even the most novel stimuli will be boring to them. For a marijuana smoker to continue working, studying, or even maintaining a relationship when not stoned takes a great deal of desire. Thus, the individual will be more likely to continue to use to combat the perpetual boredom they experience when they aren't stoned. Receptor recovery can take from two weeks uh, for moderate smokers up to six weeks or longer for heavy smokers. So they're going to be bored for six weeks. Short-term memory uh, is uh, held in the hippocampus for immediate use. If this information is needed, it will be held until it can be transferred to the long-term memory. Anandamide receptors in the hippocampus dictate how much memory is available for immediate use. Because THC occupies anandamide receptor sites, it limits the amount of hippocampal short-term memory. The user uh, may lose significant chunks of their lives while using because of the memory impairment caused by the THC. Marijuana slows learning and disrupts short-term memory, but doesn't affect long-term memory, though it does disrupt memory in general, attention span, and cognitive functioning. Oddly, users may feel that they are thinking deeper. They just can't remember what they're thinking. <laughs> That's not funny. When the brain is developing, there is an explosion of the connections and synapses among the nerve cells in the frontal lobes around age 12. A great deal of pruning of these connections and synapses will take place through the next 10 to 12 years, depending on the use. Unused connections will be broken and discarded. Heavy marijuana usage during this time frame will change the brain structure. Because of the distorting effects of marijuana, the individual may develop an impaired ability to determine danger, to organize, and to prioritize. Marijuana and MDMA use is especially destructive for memory. Marijuana tends to give their user a distorted sense of time. This is known as temporal disintegration. Uh, while this effect may help with dull, repetitive jobs, for more complex jobs like studying, the individual may become easily bored and quit. Temporal disintegration is part of the most de debilitating aspects of using marijuana, along with impaired judgment and short-term memory loss. Multiple and interactive uh, tasks can be impossible for these individuals. Distortion of time, impaired judgment, and short-term memory loss will be evident in the individual's behavior for up to seven days after use. By 28 days, the individual has returned to what passes for normal with them. Research into the effects of mar smoking marijuana on the respiratory system indicates that smoking four or five joints is as destructive on the mucous membranes in the lungs as smoking a pack of cigarettes. This is because marijuana isn't regulated as uh, to its growth and refinement and is rarely filtered. Chronic use of marijuana can lead to the, the chronic coughing and bronchitis. Uh, the, most da 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 the most damage is done to those individuals who smoke both marijuana and cigarettes. Mar marijuana smokers have increased mucus se secreting epithelial cells, but decreased cilia uh, to expel the excess mucus. For those who smoke both cigarettes and joints, uh, they lose all the cilia on their mucous membranes, meaning that they will have to cough to expel the mucus. Re uh, while researchers have found that there is no link between marijuana and lung cancer, they have also discovered that marijuana suppresses the anti-tumor immune response, leading uh, to a greater probability of developing tumors, including breast tumors. Marijuana has also been found to increase replication of HIV, accelerating its progress. Because of its capacities to suppress the immune system, users tend to be more susceptible to colds, flu, and other viral infections. The immunocompromised are not uh, advised to use marijuana. Marijuana routinely increases select mental problems, paranoia, anxiety, and depression. If a person is on the edge, the confusion and depersonalization of THC will very often tip the scales in a negative direction. Individuals who maintain a paranoid mindset while smoking marijuana 
uh, may have exacerbated reactions with stronger blends or other drug mixtures. Tolerance to marijuana occurs very rapidly. Often new smokers will experience inverse tolerance where they actually become more sensitive to the marijuana and ha have heightened sens sens sensations with less smoking. Marijuana's effects last for, for from four to six hours, but the substance may be detectable for up to 28 days and actually will stay in the body for up to three months. Because of the length of time it takes to rid the body of the substance, withdrawal from marijuana doesn't start until a longer period after abstinence. Uh, remember, it's fat soluble, so it gets into your fat. Research has disclosed that despite the rumor to the contrary, marijuana smokers do go through withdrawals, though they are more delayed than any other drug, and like other drugs, not everyone will go through all the withdrawal symptoms. Everyone will have craving. Other symptoms include anger, irritability, anxiety, and or aggression, aches, pain, chills, depression, inability to concentrate, slight tremors, sleep disturbances, decreased appetite and stomach pain, and sweating. Unlike most other drugs, marijuana has a stronger psychological addiction than physical addiction. Marijuana has uh, just as strong chronic and compulsive use as any other drug. Unfortunately, marijuana's reputation is that it is not addicting, uh, leading people into illegal usage and destructive circumstances with the idea that because it is less addictive, the behavior is all right. Adolescents are very sensitive to peer pressure. People who smoke marijuana tend to hang around other people who smoke marijuana because uh, this crowd has a more rebellious nature than, say, the chess club. Drugs tended to be around for the cool people to try. In this way, tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana are gateway drugs to heavier drug use. People who develop a pattern of use at an early age restructure brain cells toward continued addictive use. Tolerance of less serious drugs may lead to a desire to, to uh, refine that high. Uh, researchers uh, have found that almost everyone in treatment programs have started with the big three. Marijuana use by 17 gives a 2.7 to 5.2 greater chance of heavier use. Marijuana is the most widely used illicit drug in the world and is the drug of choice in many countries. This includes Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Mexico, Panama, and South Africa. In the U.S., penalties for possession and use vary from state to state. In 2004, 44.2% of the arrests for drugs were for marijuana. 90% of these arrests were for possession alone. Marijuana arrests almost doubled from 1980 to 2004. Other countries punish for marijuana. Austria, Belgium, Germany, Greece, Ireland, Italy, and Spain don't prosecute for small amounts for personal use. In England, possession of marijuana could lead to a five-year prison term, though most sen sentences are minimal. In the ne Netherlands, marijuana use is limited to the coffee shops. Sales outside this system are illegal. Some countries have the death penalty for the possession of hard drugs. Algeria, Indonesia, Iran, Malaysia, Singapore, Turkey, and Thailand. These are countries, if you're going to carry around your marijuana, stay out of those countries. In Japan, possession is illegal and people can go to jail for having less than an ounce of marijuana. This is people that live in Japan. Smugglers with larger amounts of marijuana will routinely be imprisoned for three to four years. Foreigners who are caught are deported after they serve out their sentence. Uh, these individuals will often be banned from re-entering Japan for life. Paul McCartney still can't go there because he, uh, he was found with marijuana in Japan in 1980. Uh, that was 40 years ago. He hasn't set foot in Japan since. In India, an individual can be imprisoned for up to 10 years for smoking marijuana. Venezuela has a minimum 10-year prison sentence. People caught for reckless driving or after having an accident are frequently not only tested for alcohol, but other drugs as well. In the case of marijuana, there are some circumstances that make this information erroneous. Marijuana stays in the system for weeks after it stops having a psychedelic effect on the individual. 
Elimination rates often vary by individual because of fat content. There is little accurate data about how much marijuana in the system causes impairment. There is often another drug in the system at the same time, especially alcohol. While the research is fairly con concrete when dealing with alcohol and impairment for marijuana, it is not so simple. St statistics dealing with marijuana and traffic problems often involve polydrug use. 65% of heavy drinkers also use marijuana. <clears throat> People who drive under the influence of marijuana often are paranoid and drive too slowly for traffic. Research shows impaired driving from marijuana smokers up to 8 hours after smoking, and 60% failed 2.5 hours after smoking a moderate amount. A French study showed marijuana as a factor in 10% of traffic accidents. A U.S. study showed marijuana as a factor in 4 to 14 percent of injury or fatal accidents. Most drug urine tests place the cutoff for marijuana use at 50 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, for long-term smokers of marijuana, this amount of drug could be found in their system as long as three weeks after the last use. It would take a total of six weeks for a heavy smoker to test completely negative. A first-time or infrequent user should be able to, to test negative 24 to 48 hours after use. The Olympic Committee sets a cutoff of negative, uh, off of negative at uh, 15 nanograms per milliliter. Marijuana and its extracts have been used medicinally since the beginning of recorded history as a muscle relaxant, as an analgesic or painkiller, as an appetite stimulant, uh, to control spasms and convulsions, to calm anxiety, to treat asthma, to treat jaundice, beriberi, and ague, uh, to stimulate childbirth, to relieve coughs, to treat withdrawal from opiates and alcohol as an antibiotic. Modern medicine uses marijuana or its derivatives to treat glaucoma, nausea and pain, to subdue uncontrolled movements, uh, especially multiple sclerosis, to stimulate weight gain from wasting illnesses such as cancer and AIDS. Unfortunately, abuses of the system have led to limitations on acceptance of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Marijuana and its derivatives contain THC, have been incorporated into select pharmaceuticals, dronabinol or marinol and sesamet, <clears throat> are medications containing THC that can be given to individuals for nausea and pain control. Sativex is a spray that is used as an inhaler by people suffering from MS to aid with movement coordination. These medications are merely maintenance drugs. Some patient, patients have complained that the drugs give them the feeling that they are getting better when they are actually staying the same or getting worse. If the patient has a history of addiction, the medications can lead to a relapse. The National Drug Control Policy Commission researched the use of marijuana as a medication and came up with the following conclusions. Cannabinoids have a natural role in pain modulation control of movement and memory. THC has potential therapeutic value for pain relief, control of nausea and vomiting, and as an appetite stimulant. Smoking marijuana is a crude method of delivery of THC and also delivers potentially harmful substances. The psychological effects of cannabinoids include anxiety reduction, uh, anxiety reduction, sedation, and euphoria, and can be therapeutic. Marijuana smoking is a serious risk factor for the development of respiratory diseases. And that is the end of that. Uh, so there you go.